So I've got Mandy Phillips here, who's just come from the panel that you may have been watching, the Women in Technology. So there were lots and lots of issues that I was trying to blog that. So there is a blog post on the on the uh, on the website now. Huge range of issues that we discussed there. Um, what was the the main thing that came out of that for you in terms? Of, did, did anything change what you'd thought going into that? I think I think one of the the comments towards the end of the um, the questions from from a woman in the audience saying, you know, she thinks it's great that we've got a panel of women, but she'd like it if we were talking about the future of tech and education rather than talking about the problems about women and technology. Yeah. That hit the nail on the head for me because. You know, when I was approached to do this, I, I was I was reticent about doing it because it's like I'd rather talk about what I'm doing. I'd rather talk about what I'm delivering in my role, and then and how we might be helping other people than talking about an issue which I can't fix in isolation. You know what I mean? No. Um, the 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 reference actually that I was expecting to come up in that um, discussion was earlier in the week. There was a, a BBC. I know we mentioned the BBC getting more women to be on on screen as experts. Uh, they did a Horizon program that was looking at the differences in gender, um, and I remember watching that and being very interested when they interviewed some teenage girls and boys about the kinds of jobs and whether they saw themselves becoming scientists, going into technology. Um, and all the lads sort of went, "Yeah, we want to be doctors and lawyers and all of that." And all the girls. They, they, whether it was edited this way, yes. their response was that they viewed themselves as being more creative. And that kind of concerned me, knowing that we were coming into this panel today, that is, um, you mentioned a bit about um, the way that job specs are worded. Is, is there potentially a problem that girls don't see te- roles in technology and even education technology as being particularly creative? I think I think when I moved into the technology market, it was very much as this is your job and it's kind of nailed down. One of the things I've always done and always advise people to do is to is to work out of that job description. So you might get a job that's a system administrator, but you can offer to do student inductions. You can take on other aspects which will help you grow your career. I think there's room for creativity in everything. Just because a job spec doesn't ask for it particularly doesn't mean you can't apply. I I think on my LinkedIn I've put creative change leader or something because I don't, you know, it's for me, it's the technology is something in the background. It's about solving problems and it's about appropriate use of technology and that helps us, it's an enabler to help us do stuff. So I think I think we do need to think about the skill sets that we look for and how we approach the whole recruitment process so that, you know, because it's not one HR policy fits all, I'm afraid. So that, that sounds like almost part of the problem is not so much getting the girls to take the technology A-levels, it's more about how they approach applying for jobs and the careers advice. That's a, probably a whole other kettle of fish. Um, was there anything that you would have liked to have seen come out of that debate that you didn't hear raised that you were perhaps expecting to be raised when you were, were planning what to bring up um, no I think I think most of the comments were expected and and uh, you know I've had in conversation with friends around this this topic I think there's a genuine interest from men in the sector to want to do something they're just not sure what they can do yeah. and, it, and it is you don't I don't want anybody to give me a job because I'm a woman I want them to give me a job because I'm bloody good at what I do so I don't want a positive discrimination um, but I think it is for me, with young girls particularly, it's a confidence-building thing. It is, uh, you can do this and have a go. And can we find ways of showing people what a day in a technology role looks like? Because it'll be completely different to what the A-level or the GCSE is. Yes. So it's that experience. Right. So to, get, to wrap up, so I'll let you go and get a coffee because <laughs> um, we are all milling around having coffee at the moment but um, to actually respond to that final comment at the end that was I'd rather, rather you all be talking about the future of technology and education rather than talking about the role of women what would, what would be your sort of main thing you want the, the audience here to be thinking about as being the future or, or an issue that you think we should be taking forward well, I think um, in my 12 years experience in HE a lot of technology has been owned by the IT service and the the boxes and the servers and the hardware and uh, more so by the teach and learn and development unit and and the educational aspect of it but actually it's much broader than that my role now is working with 
HR and finance and the student system and it's about the, it's it's not just the technology it's the information and actually you don't have to want to go into a role in one of those departments you can choose to work in careers with a technology bias because it's everywhere fantastic right before I let you go let's just have a very quick check whether there's anybody who has tweeted tweeted a question you get off lightly this time it's a bit early in the morning but so thank you very much for, for joining us for that I will let you go and go and grab a coffee so that's fantastic wonderful thank you and I'm very glad to see in the background there <laughs> Come forward, Heidi. We've got another one of our panelists um, from the Women in Technology panel. I was chatting to you over uh, oh, over you dinner, dinner last oh, night. Right. In Hello. fact. Hello. So this is Heidi Fraser Crest. So she was on that panel again. If you didn't didn't see that, um, so I'm going to ask you a similar question to I asked that Mandy. Actually, what, okay. what came out? What was the key thing that came out of that debate for you going forward? Because I know you were very reticent about whether we really need to have that debate or whether we should just get on with it. Okay, so I think that there, when I look at what I do at work, I think I need to think harder about the role of women. Right. I think I need to look at my recruitment practices, um, how people are rewarded. I don't think I discriminate now, but I think there are things that I can do to change my behaviour. And I also think there's stuff that I can do higher up in the institution. So I was just having a conversation out there with uh, somebody who was saying, do HR have the same conversation about having more women, having more men in HR departments? So I think this whole piece around gender balance in areas is what's key for me. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and it, I was quite interested by the, the bit of the debate where you're talking about having these women-only groups um, and whether that's a healthy thing. I mean, I'm, I'm involved in girl guiding, so I obviously believe there are, op there are situations <laughs> where, um, where girl, young girls particularly behave very differently when they're not, when the boys aren't there. Um, and whether actually that's the role that those kind of groups could take going forward rather than working to take themselves out of existence. Yeah. Um, so my instinct says that I don't like single gender groups. No. <laughs> either single male groups or single female groups. However, I have also been in situations where I've noticed that women behave differently yes. when men are there and men behave differently when women are there. And I recently participated, the Leadership Foundation are doing um, a programme called Aurora. And I participated in that and it was a room full of 200 women. And the atmosphere was very different. So I do, I'm changing my view slightly as long as when we do that, we're not about men bashing. Because I think that's really, really key. Yeah. If we do men bashing, it's no good. Yes. Yeah. And yes, I've, I've noticed that. I mean, we cover a lot of technology events. And yeah, it is, it is very noticeable, the ones where... I'm the only woman in the room and I'm technically the journalist at the back. Um, the, you can yeah. hear there's all sorts of things come out and we do, yeah. I don't want that. No. So that's maybe my view on it. Right, okay. And, and just so, before I let you go and grab a, grab a cup of tea or coffee because I know you've got to shoot off as well. Um, the point that was made at the end there about actually people wanting to see women in technology just getting on with it. Um, so coming away from the debate about women in technology, what's the future of technology and education what are the things you think we should be working towards or discussing at this event well I'm not convinced we understand yet why women aren't keen on careers in technology I think so I think that what we should be trying to do is understanding why it is women don't find the profession attractive and once you've understood that you can go some way to addressing it but at the moment I think there's a whole set of theories around that and we don't know so focus on that first Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining. I will let you go and go and grab thank a coffee. You. So thank you very much for that. So we've got Samantha Swift here, who was our keynote this morning. So wonderful. Right. So this is our Google Hangout. We're basically just chatting through some of the things that came out of mm -hmm. this morning's session. Um, so what was particularly interesting for you? I know that we over dinner last night, we were talking about the being an issue about the, having the debate at all and what kinds of things that, people that would bring up. Came through. I think it was kind of a mix in that we know there's a problem. I think some people are also a bit, to some extent, sick of just pointing at a problem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's doing something but in a way that doesn't positively discriminate because I don't think anybody wants that either. That's, that it compounds the issue again. You know, and if well, I'm saying to somebody earlier, it would make us look like idiots, really. If you're the token woman, there's nothing worse. So, you know, right people for the right jobs, but inspiring girls and guys into technology because we're, we're going to have a skills gap soon. I mean, in my industry, 
Um, there was some research done recently where they said, you know, there's thousands of people that we're going to need in the cybersecurity space to be able to, you know, to put up the good fight. We need to inspire young people. So what do you think? I mean, I know you, you recommended the book that yes. we should be reading and we, we were frantically finding the link to Very be able cool. to tweet that. So we, we have tweeted that. Um, I don't know whether it's the things that are in that or whether there are other things that you think we can be doing because you had a very limited amount of time earlier to say what you think the audience here could be doing to inspire those those young girls. So what other things do you think we could... Yeah, I mean, I'm not suggesting everybody goes out and buys a computer for the next girl they see. <laughs> this five-year-old girl goes past. I think, and to be honest, kids are using tech so much more now. Um, so, I mean, that's a good thing. I think that will help naturally inspire them. But also, I know, from careers advice... I remember going way back when I went to school, nobody really explained to me what I'd be doing in a career. I kind of, they suggested careers that I might be interested in, but... Yes, with you, a little software flowchart that came out and said you should be a florist at the yes, end. Yes. yes, it was very strange. I mean, I again wanted to be a journalist, yeah. wanted to get shot at, um, and I went and did my work experience with a newspaper, and it was really different to what I thought it was going to be. Um, but, you know, for kids now, work experience is, you know, two weeks if you're lucky... Um, you may or may not get a real experience of what it's like to work there, or you may just have to make the tea and do some filing. Yep. Um, but we have kids come in quite a lot, um, and I find people often bring in their own kids, just even to spend a day, and we kind of whistle-stop them around the different jobs, and we talk about what we do, what our days are like. And I think that, that kind of thing can be more of an eye-opener than almost you know, seeing a job description with a wish list on it. So yeah, more real experience. Yeah. Yes, I think I was talking to, I think it was Miles last night after, you, after you'd gone, that say actually part of the problem is for these young people that the jobs in technology that we need them to apply for potentially don't exist yet. Mm. And how you, have, and my job didn't exist when I was at school. Yeah. We had to create a title for what I do because you know, nobody was doing it when we started. Um, so I don't know whether there are things that sort of more generally that preparing for those unknown jobs yeah. it's a skill set thing as well it's yeah. not just you know study this and then you will go and do this job and I don't have a degree to anyone um, okay. <laughs> and it's okay I've done all right yeah. as it turns out yeah. um, I'm not saying don't bother getting a degree I know a lot of people who've got them and have done really well as well yeah. you know it's it's what it's what works for you yeah. but there are other things outside of the curriculum that you can do you know things like you know debate societies that's always a good one for building confidence for communication skills are huge you know, and especially social media. You know, it's not just a case of standing up and talking. Um, you know, being witty behind a screen. Yes. Really, really yeah. important, you know. And I think, you know, kids are getting a lot of experience of social media. Yes. Uh, you know, they're, they're using it a lot. But being able to translate that into something you can do as a job. Yeah. Um, it's, there's, there's some things you can do there, but maybe not always, you know, people hide behind a screen sometimes and there's the negative side to the internet. Yes. But if you can take something that you love doing in your life and then make that your career, that's huge. You know, and then that's, you that's what it, yeah, that's what it's all about, effectively, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, and then just looking for opportunities, that's the other part, is that you said your role didn't exist. Yeah. That sort of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial nature yeah. um, of, you know, where could I take this? We're on a tipping point, I think, at the moment. There's so much out there that we can go and do, and there's new tech coming out at this rapid speed. You know, where can you take that? And actually, the job market being what it is at the moment, more people looking for what they can do themselves and not necessarily looking for a, a nine to five job yeah. working for it's somebody else where is. yeah they've not got the job security that they might have, might have had. So yeah, there, there are more people looking to do that kind of thing now. And um, just stepping, stepping back from that, one of the, the key points that came out of that debate was actually the, the, the fatigue of people saying, actually, why are we still having this debate? Why aren't we just doing it and it will follow the more more women that are out there doing stuff um, if we were going to set that example what do you think the future of technology and education is with, whether it's women or men doing yeah. it completely by the by and, and I think it, it's just a little bit of catch up going on you know when I was at school it was how to use the computer it was yeah using yeah. word using well, it wasn't even word at that time no. it wasn't that cool um, yeah, yes. paint. We, yeah. Did a lot, we did a lot of paint. I mean, there was a computer in art where we do paint. I mean, and yeah, the, yeah. the amazing artworks that came out of that were pretty much zero. Yeah. <laughs> hey, different colours and the yeah. brush size. Um, is this is the creative side? That's where I think there is. There's so much room for people to go to now, and 
it doesn't matter which bathroom you use as to whether or not you know people have got creative skills across the board um, and taking the ability to use technology and then applying that to solving problems that's that's where I think that's the inspiring area for me anyway is it's not just can I use this am I really good at coding um, can I take what I know and can I go and learn something to help me solve problems Fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yes, thank you for, for your keynote and for, and for the debate Absolutely. that followed. I was saying to my colleague at the back, it's, it's a very brave kind of topic yeah. to, to do because it, it brings out all sorts of views on, on Twitter and, and the, the conversation I can... Twitter with you. I was Twitter, do in a minute. So. Twitter, Twitter's <laughs> been great. Nice. It brings yeah. all sorts of people out yeah. and, and it's, it is a really tricky um, debate because obviously it's something people feel quite very strongly emotive. about. Very yes. Emotive. Yeah. Yes, um, so yeah, do, do enjoy checking, checking out the Twitter stream. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. Yeah, fantastic. Right.